In this video, we will show you the very basics of what you need to know to begin driving steppers with K-Step. We will then discuss the hardware, and finally we will show you how to set up the software for a 3-axis system as an example. After watching this video, you will have a good foundation to begin delving deeper into K-Step's capabilities. First of all, what is K-Step? K-Step is a four-axis stepper driver that is designed to work hand-in-hand -hand with our K-Flop motion controller and is a great choice to control stepper-based CNC machines, for example. K-Step can be stacked together for a total of eight axes of stepper control, or it can be used in combination with our other boards. In addition to four stepper motor drives, K-Step has one analog output, which can be used for spindle control, 16 optically isolated inputs, and two optically isolated outputs. K-Step runs efficiently with 17 milliohm MOSFETs. It has 16x microstepping, and at $50 per axis, it is a very affordable alternative to nearly every other drive on the market. We will now briefly cover the hardware setup. We suggest that you take time to review more detailed information on our website. K-Step requires five volts for board power, which can be provided through either connector J6 through connector JR1, if K-Flop is not receiving five volts, or simply through the connection with K-Flop, if K-Flop is receiving five volts. 12 to 48 volt motor power can be provided through connector J1 or through connector JR1, but it cannot be provided through both J1 and JR1 at the same time. Note that if motor power is provided through JR1, it is likely that 5 volts of board power is also provided through this connection, and you should either remove the jumper on K-Flop J3 or remove the isolation jumpers on K-Step JP34 and JP35. Motor connections are located at J2 through J5. Wire in motors with one coil pair on A plus and A minus and the other coil on B plus and B minus. Do not mix the two motor coils since this will cause damage. Current limiters are located behind each motor terminal block and jumpers must be installed for each motor coil according to this table, which is available on our website. A voltage limiting function is available for protection against regenerative braking. Install jumpers according to this table, which is available on our website. Inputs and outputs are provided on connector JP33. You may find it useful to purchase a breakout board such as the BRK 2x13 available at Winford.com to make wiring easier. Please visit our website for more information on the pinouts. Finally, step and direction signals can be provided through JP26 when K-Step is used with other Dynamotion boards. We will now cover the software setup for a 3-axis system in a high level of detail. The purpose of these first few steps is to make sure the software and hardware are working as expected, and then to create an init file that will form the basis of our system. To make sure the software and hardware are working properly, start by opening Commotion. Check that KFLOP is receiving communication by opening the console screen and pulling the firmware version number. Make sure the firmware version number is the same as the version of the commotion you are running. If it is not the same version, download the new firmware to KFLOP using the config and flash screen. Next, we will make sure the motors are working properly and set the motion parameters. For our 3-axis system, we have motors wired into J2, J3, and J4. Start by enabling the MOSFET drive circuitry by opening the digital I.O. screen and enabling bit 45. Next, open the config and flash screen, select channel 0, which will correspond to our motor wired onto J2, and load the channel parameters for K-Step axis 0. Then, open the step response screen, ensure channel 0 is selected at top, and click the move button. The motor connected to J2 should move. 
you may need to increase the move size to 10,000 in order to detect the speed and smoothness of the motion. Observe the motion and change the motion parameters to achieve the desired speed and smoothness. Mainly, you will want to change the velocity values, which are in steps per second. The motor in our setup begins to stall above 13,000 steps per second, so we will back off that to a reasonable speed. Note that every time the move button is pressed, the parameters are shared across software screens and there is no need to save the parameters. Also notice that the motion profile is plotted on the right side of the screen. This is the commanded trajectory only since we do not have encoder feedback. The actual trajectory is not plotted and can be removed from the plot. You can also save the plotted data for closer analysis. Repeat these steps for each motor. You will also want to repeat these steps when your motors are under load since the dynamics of the system will be different. The final step to our software setup is the creation of the init file. Start by opening the C program window and opening the default KSTEP 3-axis program. Save the program as a new name. We'll briefly cover a few lines of code in this file. This line is what instructs KFLOP to read in the 16 isolated inputs. This line is required for the analog output to function. This line is required for KFLOP to generate the right step and direction signals for KSTEP. Each channel has a number of parameters that we will not go over right now, but at the end of each channel is a line that places that channel in the coordinate system. For channel 0, we use this line to set it as KFLOP x-axis. Later in the code, we define our XYZ coordinate system and then reference our channel 0. Also, at the end of this example is a loop that performs a disable after a period of no motion. Note that there is another default file that does not have this portion if you do not want the axes to automatically disable. You can also add your custom code here as well. Now we need to port over the motion parameters that we just set into this file. We could manually enter the parameters in each channel, or we can go to the config and flash screen and export the parameters to our open C program. Finally, we save the C program and we are ready to run Commotion CNC. Open Commotion CNC. We first want to update our init button to reference the file we just created. Go to Tool Setup, User Buttons, and update the file reference to point to the new init file we just created. and press the init button. We are now ready to run some G-code to see our motors moving together. Open an example G-code from our G-code programs folder and click the green arrow to begin. We can follow along with the G-code viewer. Note that you can change the speed in real time with this speed hold slider. To get accurate motion, you need to measure the counts per inch for your system and enter them in the trajectory planner screen within the tool setup window. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching and please see our website for more information.